People and their pets have a close bond of friendship, but love alone is not enough. Worms can spoil this wonderful relationship. Worms can occur in dogs and cats of any age. The situation is worst in puppies, who are usually heavily infested with worms. They suffer from vomiting and diarrhea and develop a pot belly. The fur is dull and lifeless. Two types of worms are found in dogs and cats, tapeworms and roundworms. Tapeworms consist of a chain of individual segments which resemble grains of rice called proglottids. They live in the intestine and can reach two meters in length. The segments are excreted in the feces and can sometimes be seen around the anus. Tapeworms are transmitted by fleas. When dogs or cats chew a flea, they can become infected with tapeworms. Mice also transmit worms. Pets that hunt mice are therefore particularly at risk of picking up worms. The second major group of worms with which dogs and cats can be infected are the roundworms. These include the large roundworms, which look like spaghetti and reach about 10 centimeters in length. Although they can occur in bundles in the intestine, they're rarely eliminated with the feces. Hookworms are small roundworms. Their larvae can bore through the skin. Dogs and cats get infected with worm eggs almost anywhere. They can pick up eggs excreted with the feces as they rummage around. Even cats living permanently indoors are not safe because worm eggs can be carried into the house at any time. Puppies can get infected with worm larvae while still in the womb. After birth, worm larvae are transmitted to puppies and kittens in their mother's milk. Soon after birth, adult egg-laying worms develop inside the puppy or kitten. The bitch or queen can then reinfect herself with worms while grooming her young. Here's an overview of the different ways in which infections can be transmitted. Fleas transmit the most common tapeworm of dogs and cats. Mice transmit roundworms and tapeworms. Roundworm eggs can be picked up by pets as they rummage around. Puppies get infected with worms in the womb. Puppies and kittens get infected via their mother's milk. Humans can also pick up worms from dogs and cats. When pets lick their owner's face and hands or lick food, worm eggs can accidentally be swallowed. A high risk of infection exists in playgrounds contaminated with dog or cat feces. Worm eggs, which are invisible to the naked eye, can accidentally be swallowed by children. Worm larvae can penetrate bare skin. This can cause inflammations of the skin and damage to internal organs. In areas where the fox tapeworm occurs, hunting dogs, sheep dogs and dogs preying on mice should be dewormed regularly every four weeks, for example with Dronsit. Remember, worms are bad for pets and getting rid of these unwelcome parasites couldn't be easier. Fleas transmit the double-pored dog tapeworm Diplidium caninum, the most common tapeworm of cats. The larva of the double-pored dog tapeworm is carried in the body of the flea. If cats chew an annoying flea while they are grooming themselves, the tapeworm larva is released and travels through the stomach to the gut. On reaching the gut, the tapeworm larva attaches itself by its head to the intestinal mucosa. Now the development from larva to sexually mature adult begins. Adult tapeworms consist of a head, which is used for attachment, and a neck, followed by a chain of continuously forming segments called proglottids. Each proglottid is an independent unit containing many hundreds of eggs. Mature tapeworm segments packed with eggs are shed individually and excreted with the feces. They are sometimes noticed as small, wriggling shapes resembling cucumber seeds or grains of rice. Once in the environment, the proglottids dry out and burst, releasing the tapeworm eggs. Flea larvae swallow the tapeworm eggs. While the flea larva develops into an adult flea, the tapeworm larva inside it hatches from the tapeworm egg and the cycle begins all over again.
Cats can get infected with roundworm eggs and larvae almost anywhere. They can pick up worm eggs from their surroundings as they rummage around. The eggs are swallowed and enter the gut, where larvae hatch from the worm eggs. Depending on the animal's age and the strength of its immune system, the larvae penetrate the intestinal wall and embark on their migration through the body. They enter the blood vessels and are carried in the bloodstream to various organs. These organs are damaged by the migratory movements of the worm larvae. In young animals, the larvae often travel to the liver and then to the lungs via the bloodstream. From here, they reach the trachea, are coughed up, swallowed, and travel through the esophagus to the intestine, where they settle and develop into mature, egg-laying adults. Adult worms can produce up to 200,000 eggs daily. The worm eggs, which are invisible to the naked eye, are excreted in the animal's feces. They are able to survive for several years in the soil and act as a source of infection for other animals. Some of the worm larvae migrating around the body do not return to the intestine. They become encapsulated, mainly in the muscles, and enter a state of dormancy. These arrested larvae in the muscles are the reason why worms are transmitted from the queen to her kittens. At the end of pregnancy, the dormant larvae are reactivated by hormones. They reach the mammary gland via the bloodstream. Newborn kittens can then be affected through their mother's milk. Cats can become infected with hookworm larvae as they sniff the ground. The larvae reach the cavity of the mouth and are then swallowed. Hookworm larvae are also able to actively bore through the skin. This is called percutaneous infection. Larvae that are introduced to the animal percutaneously are carried through the bloodstream to various organs. As they traverse the body, they make their way into the lungs via the heart and from there travel into the windpipe. Once in the windpipe, they are coughed up and swallowed again, ultimately to settle in the intestine. Irrespective of whether the larvae have been introduced orally or percutaneously, they will not mature into adult worms until they have reached the intestine. The full-grown worms mainly fasten themselves to the mucous membrane of the jejunum. While doing so, they often change their point of attachment, which then usually bleeds. With their sharp teeth, they literally bite out chunks of the mucous membrane so that they can suck out some 0.1 millimeters of blood per worm per day. Consequently, a hookworm infestation can result in a severe case of anemia. The sexually mature worms produce thin-shelled eggs that are excreted with the cat feces. Once they have been released into the open, the hookworm larvae eggs will grow inside the egg. They hatch and can then be found crawling around near the droppings. Mice and other rodents are intermediate hosts for the cat tapeworm Tania taniaformis. Internally, they harbor the tapeworm-like Strobliosarcus larvae. If the cat eats an infected mouse, the tapeworm larvae are released and travel via the esophagus into the stomach and from there into the intestine. This is where they will later grow into sexually mature tapeworms. In contrast to other tapeworms, Tania taniaformis does not have a neck which is to say that the head transitions directly into the so-called budding zone behind which new segments, the proglotids, are constantly being formed. Fastened by the head to the mucous lining of the intestine, three to four new proglotids are formed like this every day. The sexually mature proglotids contain the worm eggs. Tenia taniaformis can grow to lengths of up to 60 centimeters. The final segments, full-grown and fully loaded with eggs, are segmented individually and expelled into the open with the animal feces.
Once in the open, the worm eggs are pressed out of the proglottids. The tenya egg, which can be identified by a radial striation, already contains a larva with six hooks. Mice consume the eggs. In the liver, the hexaconth larvae once again mature into the infectious strobliosarcus stage. Mice are a source of infection for the little fox tapeworm, Echinococcus multilucularis. Similar to its effect in people, the dangerous larval stage causes tumor-like destruction of the liver tissue in the mouse. If the cat eats an infected mouse, the tapeworm larvae will be released and travel via the esophagus into the stomach, and from there into the intestine. The head appendage, the so-called Protoscolesis are released in the intestine during digestion. The head appendage, which bears a ring of hooks, turns inside out and attaches itself to the intestinal mucous membrane. Here, the larvae mature into adult tapeworms, which, in contrast to other tapeworms, are only a few millimeters in size and have only two to five segments, or proglottids. The full-grown worms live between the villi of the mucous membrane of the small intestine. Their minute size is compensated for by the fact that large numbers of adult worms can appear in a single host. The sexually mature and gravid segment, which is filled with mature eggs, are expelled into the open with the animal feces. Out in the open, the proglottids dry out and the eggs enter the environment. The eggs already contain the larvae with which mice and other rodents, but people as well, can become infected. The larvae mature almost exclusively in the liver and slowly destroy it, similar to a malignant tumor. In human beings, symptoms do not appear for a number of years. By that time, the disease called alveolar echinococcus is extremely difficult to treat and frequently deadly.